Brought to you in part by Mananoc Flooring and Decorating, offering quality sales, service, and installation for over 35 years on Production Avenue next to Subaru of Keene. Hey everybody, welcome to A Culinary Journey. I'm Luca Paris, and our culinary journey today is going to be behind the scenes on my menu. That's right, I'm going to cook three items right off of the menu. One's a shrimp cilantro with pan-seared shrimp and this naan bread that I'm going to grill up. We're going to do lobster ravioli with a tarragon lemon cream sauce out of this world. And then finally, chicken scarpiello. So great flavors. I'm going to show you them all. They're right on my menu. People always ask me about them. And I'm going to show you because your culinary journey starts now. Welcome back, and we're here on our culinary journey. I needed to bring a guest in. She used to work for me a long time ago. Kirsten Perkins, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Uh, great. Great. I need some help today. Okay. How we got to create <laughs> a cook. <laughs> no, we can do dishes. No, what we're going to do today is we're going to create dishes from my new menu. You used to work for me, remember? Yes, I do. You do. <laughs> so when you worked for me, we had a kind of a different menu. We had some different items yeah. on there. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I, put, I get a lot of people always ask me about new menu items and, you know, how do I make that? What do I make at home? You show us all this other stuff. Why don't you show us your menu? So that's what I'm going to do today. And then, you know, maybe if you learn them all, you can work for me. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> so this is what we're going to do. I'm going to need your help. We're going to do a shrimp cilantro. It's a really quick appetizer you can mm -hmm. do at home. People will love it. The ingredients basically are the cilantro pesto that I have here, and that's basically just pureeing uh, cilantro with a touch of garlic, salt and pepper, and that's it with olive oil. Yep. So that could preserve it, right? We're going to do some shallots and garlic. I'll chop up the garlic. You'll chop up the shallots, and then the plum tomatoes, and then shrimp. Great. Easy enough? Yes. All right. The other thing we're going to be making is chicken scarpiello. Have you ever had chicken scarpiello no, before? No, I don't think so. It's called the shoemaker's chicken. Okay. Not because it's tough. <laughs> I was like, really? <laughs> so not because it's tough, but because of the ingredients. It's, it's this old world Italian dish that's usually done with a whole chicken and roasted. Mm -hmm. We're going to pan roast it. I'm going to use chicken thighs, which are my personal favorite. Yeah, me too. Good. At the restaurant, we use chicken breast mm -hmm. because, you know, they don't want the, th the thigh thing. But it's my favorite. This is the way I really want it to look. Okay. So we're going to do that in the pan. So I need first from you, I need you to get me the chicken and the shrimp. Okay. All right, perfect. I'm going to stand right here and hang out. And she's going to go get that. I'm going to get the pan going. And this is what we're going to do. Uh, we have a grill pan in the back working for our naan bread. We'll show you a little bit about that in a bit. And then here are our proteins. This is uh, actually 1620 shrimp, which means, you know? Uh, it's the size of them? Yes, exactly. High five. There you go. You can, you'll be tested on this later. <laughs> so that, that means that about 16 or 20 of these come to a pound. Okay. So that's the way it works. And we've cleaned them out and taken the, the shells off, everything, even the tails. I really don't understand digging into a sauce and pulling a tail off the yeah. shrimp. I'm, I'm a big fan of like, kind of taking them right off of there. So that's our shrimp. That's the way to start. These are our chicken thighs that we're working with. So I'm going to get these going right away because these need to sear a little bit. So I'm going to get the pan going with that. Why don't you start our shallots, Kirsten? Okay. And then you'll cut up our shallots for, for a couple of different things. So we'll be able to do that. Put some oil in the pan in the back. That's where our chicken's going to start pan braising. Um, but I'm going to get a nice sear on those. So we'll turn that up. And then this will be for our shrimp dish. So you used, to, you used to do this for a living, the whole mm -hmm. restaurant thing, and you thought you wanted to do this? And yep, I was uh, accepted to go to culinary school, the Culinary Institute of America, and then just kind of went on a different path, you know? Nice. <laughs> and now you're back. And <laughs> now I'm back. <laughs> and now you're Something's cooking. Something's never changed. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, um, while you're doing that, while you're getting the shallots ready, what I'm just doing is dusting our chicken thighs here with this Ariosto blend that we use. It's a blend of herbs and spices that are my light, like little magic secret. So we're giving out all our secrets behind the scenes, okay? And uh, that's what we're going to do today. Let's see if the soil's hot enough. Eh, a little bit more for that. We're going to get our chicken, leave it right there. 
And again, we'll talk more about the chicken in a second. I just want to get it cooking. On the other side, though, we'll get our shrimp cooking pretty quickly. And mm -hmm. shrimp cooks really fast. It's great. If you're cooking shrimp at home, one of the things you might want to do uh, for an appetizer or an entree for, for a party, if you want to do a lot of cooking, is do shrimp over a pasta or even this quick appetizer. You'll absolutely love it. So Is that enough shallots? I think that looks good. You're okay. good. Get a couple of shrimp in there. How many do you want? Um, I want all the shrimp. Oh, <laughs> really? Can really? I have at least one? <laughs> all right, we'll put a whole bunch in here. We're going to sear this off. Well, what's great again? What's great about this dish is that we could actually cook it all right in the same pan and not do anything to it. Yeah, I'm going to give you easy. some uh, parsley to cut up too, as a little bit of a garnish. You do that, and I'll chop the garlic. Now, shrimp cook quickly, so if someone hasn't cooked with shrimp before. You'll find that you have to stay around it. This, this is not something you throw in the oven and walk away from um, because it'll get tough and overdone. Oh, I needed a knife. I was looking what I was looking for and a little bit of garlic. So do you still keep your cooking and uh, kitchen skills up to date or are you um, cooking a lot at home? or? Well, when I first moved back home, I... For like a week, I was like, oh, I'm going to do this and do this and do this. And my, you know, my parents were like, don't start anything you can't maintain because so, in a few weeks we'll be upset. So apparently you didn't cook anything. Well, I cook sometimes. <laughs> or at least I'll say that for appearances All sake. right, there you go. It's not like your dad's not on the other side listening to all this. Yeah. I don't think that's true. All right, we're going to flip over our shrimp, turn down the heat a little bit. It goes from that gray shrimp to this pink or light orange, kind of translucent. We're going to get all that out. Now, once I turn it over, this is the best part of this is the best part to start adding items in. We'll add in a little bit of our garlic, our shallots, and we're going to kind of just keep them tossing in there so they cook down, right? Mm -hmm. And watch how fast this goes quick. You yeah, ready? I'm ready. You see? No. <laughs> but before that goes too far, because I know I'm getting this nice and hot, I want to get the nice sear on my chicken thighs. Let's see how many we could get in there. For people who've been watching the show, and I know, Kirsten, even when you were away from Keen, you, you religiously watched my show, right? When I could, yeah. For appearances, I watched it all the time. <laughs> I watched it all the yeah, time. Yeah, exactly. So anyway, for, for people that watch my show, no, chicken thighs are my absolute favorite thing. So I need a little bit of white wine. Here you go. You give me the white wine from over there. Put a little bit of white wine in here, and we're going to cook that in there. So that's... Those are our other ingredients, right? Mm -hmm. Let me get a spoon real quick because I'll show you what we do next. We throw in some plum tomatoes. Now the shrimp are basically cooked. Now what I'm really just doing at this point is cooking a sauce to go with it. And when people ask me about the restaurant business and they say, well, you know, it must be so hard to make all those items all the time. What we try to do, and you, you've seen this happen, mm -hmm. we try to make sauces that are good Full of a lot of flavor, but right. simple to prepare. Yeah. Because when we get really busy in the kitchen. It's got to go quick. Yeah, and no one's going to wait for something that takes forever, right? So we have our tomato sauce cooking down into there. So it's right now we're at tomatoes, and we're, we need a little bit of lemon in here. I never like to do seafood without lemon. Here, you want to do me a roll and cut? So let me show you something before you do okay. that. Okay. You want to get the juices activated in there? Okay. All right, just give it a roll. So it starts almost, it's almost like you're juicing it inside. Okay. And then now you cut, it, cut in it in half. cut it in half? Yeah, and then it'll squirt at you. No, I'm kidding. No, it didn't. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just put a little bit of lemon juice. I love the acidity in there. And you're going to see the amount of lemon juice we use in the Scarpiello later on, too. All right. So what I need from you is okay. to grab me a couple of plates from behind me. We'll plate up this first one. Then when we come back, I'll show you the rest of the chicken Scarpiello, because that's going to be absolutely incredible. And we're going to take the shrimp out because the shrimp are basically cooked. And then what I'm waiting for on the other side is just the sauce to complete. Now, I didn't add the cilantro pesto in there too early, mainly because uh, if I do, it starts to get really gray and dark. I want a vibrant, bright color, and I don't want to lose all that flavor on there. So what I'm going to do is, are you expecting a, a third guest? No. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, no, no, it's just, just us two. We'll do four each. What I'm able to do, I don't want to overcook my shrimp, so I take them out and make sure they're out. And I put this back up and I turn it on high so we break down. Now the plum tomatoes from a can, a little bit chunky. I don't use like a marinara sauce or anything like that. And then at the very last minute, as this sauce is reducing down, 
We add just a little bit of cilantro pesto. Turn off the heat uh, on the right one, yeah? We'll turn off the heat and kind of mix it in there. And it starts giving it that beautiful color. Yeah, that is and, beautiful. And consistency. Uh, you can use fresh cilantro for this, but if you're holding cilantro at your house, you might want to just keep it as a pesto because you could use it any time. I'll put a little bit over there. Do you like cilantro? I do. Good. You know, some people don't like it. Well, they're crazy. <laughs> no, it, it actually... It tastes really good. It tastes like soap. You ever have anybody tell you that cilantro tastes like soap? Nope. There's an enzyme in it that for certain people, their body uh, or whatever, they when it reacts with what they eat, um, it gives them a soapy flavor, which is kind of interesting. Wow, that is interesting. So anyway, that's our shrimp cilantro. It's beautiful. Don, you can do that at home? Yes, absolutely. Good. Guess what you're making for dinner tonight for right. your family. I'm going to flip these over. When we come back, we're going to talk some chicken scarfiello and give you the recipe for that. Kirsten's got a lot of cutting to do, and she's going to tell us about her adventures out in the real world. No, she didn't. <laughs> All right. Don't go away. We'll be right back. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome back to a Culinary Journey. We just finished making cilantro, shrimp, and tomato, and yummy. You want to try it? Yes, absolutely. That's why you brought the forks out here, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, <laughs> I'm prepared. And I'm starting on the chicken scarpiello. Now I need your help with the chicken scarpiello. Mm. Is it good? Mm -hmm. Did you eat the whole thing at once? <laughs> All right, she won't be talking the rest of the show. She's good. The only other thing that I didn't get to put on there, what I want to do right now, is, is this kind of naan bread. I actually, you could actually pick them up at the supermarket. We use them. When we make wraps now with, at the restaurant, mm -hmm. we use sausage and peppers in here or a gyro or anything like that. So these are really yummy. I also like to serve a little bread with this. Okay. So what I'm going to do really quick is I have my grill pan there. Just drizzle some oil on here. Grill this naan bread right on the grill pan. And then we're going to serve some bread with that so we can awesome. have like a little crostini with it. Sounds good? Yeah. All right, so our chicken, check out our chicken. We kind of seared one side, flipped it over. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of people put this right into the oven, right? I like to do everything right in the pan, turn it on medium low, and I'm going to make the whole sauce and everything in here. It's going to taste now, really good. Yeah, and, and the key behind scarpiello is this. You need a little sweet, a little spicy. You need some roasted potatoes. You also need, let's see if this will, oh, it goes on right away now. That's beautiful. We we'll also need lemon and rosemary. So okay. when someone says scarpiello, they think lemon, rosemary, potatoes, peppers, and a little spice. Okay. So the way we create that at the restaurant is really simple. What I'm going to do is this. I'm going to have you cut the potatoes because we're going to pan roast the potatoes. And I need like small, thin slices. Okay. So I could pop them in this pan and roast them. So okay. you're on top of that. And I might as well just cut the peppers for now. And those are just things we're going to add to our sauce here. How's and, that? Oh, that's beautiful. Okay. You're, you're just like a natural. I learned from the best. Oh, and yes. And she didn't mean me, but I'm going to take it as me. How about we go that way? <laughs> so, and I'm going to cut up the peppers so that way that we have a nice kind of selection of sweet peppers. Now, what I like to do, if you're doing this at home and you want to really give this a kick, you could, instead of going sweet peppers, go in the other direction and get yourself some spicy peppers or vinegar peppers. And you get this nice like kind of vinegary bite or with the sausage, maybe even go to do a hot sausage, if you like that also. Because you want to really have a nice balance of heat, sweetness, and a lot of flavor. So, yeah, about, give me a couple of do a dozen potatoes that fit in the bottom of this pan. We won't worry about the ones that don't make it on the cutting board because they <laughs> roll right off, right? So, yeah. <laughs> and then sausage. What, what I have here is basically an Italian sausage. And you take the Italian sausage, boil it just a little bit, so you kind of take the fat out, right? Do okay. you understand that? Yes. Because when you blanch it out like that, first of all, it cooks and it kind of holds together. And then secondly, um, you won't have this really big, we have a lot of fat. We have the fat from the skin of the chicken breast. And mm -hmm. then we have the oil that it's searing in. And then if we added the sausage in there, it kind of, it's just kind of overwhelming. As much as I like it, we just need to cut back every little bit. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is just slice this in half and we're going to sear that in with our chicken. Okay? okay. How are our potatoes coming? They're coming great. Ready to get them in a pan? Um, if you say so, sure. I think I can need one more. All right, you get one more and we'll start getting them ready. Okay. This is one of my favorite ways to do potatoes because really you don't have to do, you know how people have to boil them or throw them in an in a oven for a long time? If you slice them thin like you were making potato chips, you could sear and get a, such a beautiful, oh, you do have a lot of <laughs> a beautiful finish on your potatoes and they'll cook all the way through. 
You know, this part I definitely want to pay attention to because I try to make fried potatoes at home all the time, and they're really? either too brown on the outside and raw on the inside or mushy. Okay, so we start we start to heat up on high. Okay. Get the pan kind of smoking hot. Turn okay. it down to medium, and then kind of let them fry in there, just like you do in fried chips. And do you usually cut them a little thicker or, or lighter? Or um, I feel like I start with this size, but I either have not enough heat or too much. Okay. Well, we're going to turn it down a little bit, and you do one layer, right? Okay. Because that's the key right there. You don't want to put any on top of each other. By putting in one layer, whatever you fit on that one layer, and we can do the rest on, on the second layer that we get. Now, the sausage, I want to get inside that chicken. Now, that chicken's cooking in the oil that we started mm -hmm. and also creating a little bit of its own, and that's going to be great because it's going to add to our sauce too, right? So we'll get that in there, get our sausage in there. And you can put as much sausage as you want. I love leaving stuff over there. Do you have a towel anywhere? Uh, no? It's actually in that drawer. In which one? In this drawer. Oh, then get me a towel. Why not? There you go. And then I'm going to put some peppers over the top here, and those will start cooking in there, too. Oh, you're good at this. Yeah. You know where everything is. I barely do. So let's go back to our naan bread. Now, this naan bread not only goes great with that shrimp that we did, but could you imagine what this would be like with the chicken scarpiello, too? Um, yeah, so delicious. Good. Yeah. Okay. You know, you know the answers. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's cut this up. Add that to our shrimp right there. Okay. And while you do that, I'll get ourselves started on the rest of this. So here we have our scarpiello. In our scarpiello, we have the chicken that's cooking its way through, right? And we have the peppers and the sausage in there. I'm going to add one more ingredient there in a second. Get the peppers and the sausage so they're in the oil. That chicken is definitely going to be cooking beautifully. And I need some rosemary. We're going to throw whole stalks of rosemary in. You got any rosemary on your side? Uh, yeah, I do. <laughs> there you go. That's the one that looks like a Christmas tree? Yes. There you go. And we're going to just crack it because we're not going to try and eat the rosemary, but we are going to get all that flavor out of there. So by putting big pieces in, it's going to really kind of pop. Those flavors are going to be incredible. And we're going to actually add some of those flavors to the potatoes we have. So now, still not cooked. You see that? We still got to leave mm -hmm. it in. Just let it sit, and we won't burn the outside. But it we are going to get a nice caramelized brown. Okay. Yeah, you're going to absolutely love that. Need chicken stock, lemon juice, and a little white wine. Oh, you're good. You, you are good. We'll start with deglazing our pan with a little bit of white wine. Okay. Now remember, that's all we're really doing is braising this. Now, traditionally, like I said, mm -hmm. this is all put and tossed together in an oven. Okay. Baked off for like 45 minutes okay. with the whole chicken and all the ingredients that just kind of cooked together. But I'm doing this without turning on the oven at all. Right. All right? Uh, this is our lemon juice. Lemon is a big, big part of this. So do not skimp on the lemon. I even like to fry a little bit of lemon, too, sometimes and get it in there. This is where we can now turn this on. It kind of braises in here. And then the chicken stock. All right? So we give that. It kind of almost covers the chicken. We've seared it really well. Mm -hmm. We have all our flavors in there. We're going to turn up the heat, and then we're going to let that work. Here on our potatoes, real simple, I'm going to use that Ariosto spice, which you could take home today. Yay! As, a, as being a guest here on the show. I'm very excited. <laughs> and we're going we're gonna to kind of just get all those flavors still going through and giving the potatoes those same flavors. So let's check out how they're looking. Even that, I mean, I turn them over and then we could, we could always turn them back. Okay. You know, some of the ones in the middle sometimes don't get as cooked as fast, but Ones on the outside, especially depending on your pan and knowing your hot spots, just flip them over. You know one side's already starting to cook. Mm -hmm. and again, we could always turn it back later on and flip them until they're ready. But the idea is to give them crispiness on the outside. But I don't want them crispy all the way through, though. I don't, okay. You know, I want them nice and soft on the inside. Right. All right? And again, it all depends on how thick you cut them. So these are gonna, some of these are going to be absolutely beautiful. Let's turn our grill pan off. Oh, that one's nice. And we'll come back to the ones that didn't. But it'll give us a good idea of what we're doing. So this is what we have to do. We kind of have to let our chicken cook down. So we'll turn that down, let that finish cooking down. We'll clear up, get ready, get our potatoes done. And when we come back, we start on our, wow, it's a lot of work here. <laughs> <laughs> we finish off our chicken where it becomes almost into a sauce okay. versus kind of like this braising liquid. We'll finish that. The potatoes will be done. And then we cook lobster ravioli. You like lobster ravioli? Yes, yes. Cool. Do you like tarragon? Yes. Do you like lemon? Yes. Do you like cream? Yes. Golden. <laughs> Don't go away because you're going to see all that when we come back. Hey, everybody. Welcome back.
back to a culinary journey. We're cooking up a storm, huh? Yes, we are. Look at that smile. You're like happy to be here. I am happy you, to be here. Or they just said, action. <laughs> you're like, hi. <laughs> All right, so we have to make ravioli. We have our chicken finishing up. Did you see it yet? Yes. All right, so in the chicken, we have sausage, we have peppers, we have uh, lemon, rosemary, and I want to just add a little bit of spice. So we're going to add our cayenne pepper now. All right, just a, just a sprinkle. You could do with or without the spice. And like I said, you could use spicy sausage. You can use spicy peppers. Mm -hmm. Anything you want to do. Those are, but as long as the ingredients have the lemon, the rosemary, the potatoes, peppers, and the sausage, and of course the chicken, you have a scarpiello. Now we're going to make a lobster with a lemon tarragon cream sauce. Okay? Yeah. Lemons are everywhere in my dishes, huh? <laughs> I love it. I love the acidity in there. This is almost ready, too. We're going to have this totally done by the time we do this dish. Awesome. All right, so these are the ravioli I use, right? Mm -hmm. Ravioli is plural. Okay. I'm just going to teach you a little Italian lesson, right? Raviolis is not a word. Okay. <laughs> ravioli. One of these, what do, you, do you know what it's called? A ravioli. <laughs> Raviolo. Oh, I didn't know that. See, I knew I would teach you something wow, today. Wow. That's, that's exciting for nobody I but no us way right to know. now. <laughs> I have no way to know if you're telling the truth or making it, this it, all up. It's <laughs> totally true. I read it on the internet in Wikipedia. They're always right. Right, right yeah. absolutely. All right, so this is a real quick sauce. I need shallots. You got shallots anywhere? I have shallots right here. Wow, you're good. <laughs> so shallots, oil. This is our lemon cream sauce for our ravioli. And over here I have our ravioli boiling. So we're going to be, hopefully those will be ready before the show ends. Come on, <laughs> baby. We're all the way up. Let's see if I get you all the way, all the way high, high, high. Okay, they'll be ready. And I need tar tarragon. You're good. You said it was a fast sauce. <laughs> I'm trying to, <laughs> trying to catch up. So we're going to saute our shallots down. We'll add a little salt and pepper. Now watch quickly, folks. Oh, do you know where the cream is? It's right here. Good, you do. Do you know where the wine is? Um, it's on your side. No, it's on nope, your side. Nope, it's right here. There you go. You know where the lemon juice is? Yep, right uh, here. It's good. <clears throat> we'll saute the shallots. Some carry on, okay? We add a little bit of white wine. And now with the, with the tarragon, you need the acidity, of course. And then we're doing lobster, too, right? So we're going to add our lemon, and we're going to kind of let that all reduce down. The amount of lemon you like in a dish is really up to you. I think I like the acidic feel and the balance that it gives. It really is up to you. And if you don't want to use lemon, you can use like a, a, a cider vinegar or something like a, a lighter mirin, not mirin, uh, rice wine vinegar really goes great. It gives a little bit of acidic component, but not too much flavor. So we're going to let those kind of just come down together. This is the base of our sauce. There's our tarragon. We're going to get that in, right? Is this our tarragon? Yes, it's tarragon. Okay. I'm going to get that in. And now I usually use, make sure the herbs go in last minute, but this sauce is such a last minute sauce that we're not going to lose a lot of that flavor. Okay. Now come over here and smell okay. that. Smell this. That smell good? Yeah, it smells fantastic. You sure? Yes. Here, smell. No? no okay. They can't do it. <laughs> it's only us. All right. We got that in. Two more ingredients we're going to put in there. Sun-dried tomatoes to give it some color. Okay. You don't put them in right away when you're sautéing your shallots because then they're going to burn. Mm -hmm. I put, it, put them in when there's liquid in there, okay. and that's our lemon juice. And then they kind of plump as you cook them. They're like ball, ballpark sun-dried tomatoes. We have frozen peas. Now, I don't put the frozen peas in just yet. Okay. Again, just like um, with the cilantro pesto, if we put it in right at the beginning, you know what's going to happen? It's going to gray. Going to gray. These will get really gray. Okay. And I've actually put them in frozen, and they thaw right away. Mm -hmm. But if you keep them frozen, and then and then you um, you let them become fresh, they don't be frozen anymore. Yeah. They thaw. <laughs> thaw. That's it. <laughs> this is why I have you on the show. We're going to add a little cream. Now, while I'm putting in the cream and letting that reduce, look at those beautiful colors already. Those that are beautiful nice. colors. We need a couple of plates because we're going to get our chicken plated. And then we're going to get everything else plated. How's that? Let's get this higher, this higher. Bingo. Let's get that chicken on there. First, our potatoes. Chicken oh, scarpiellos. those are beautiful. Aren't they nice? Not too cooked, but you're going to have a nice texture on them. And they're the base of our sauce, or a base of our plate, really. Now, what's great about a chicken scarpiello dish is that you do not need to do a starch and a veg and everything. It's all already right there. And if you wanted to, Doing this at home, you could actually cook your potatoes in advance and then throw them right in at the last minute um, with your dish. We got a nice dinner here, don't we? We do. Maybe, maybe we could get to it before your dad gets to it. I don't think so. No? That's all right. I'm making him something else later on. 
Let's get a couple of pieces of chicken on there. <laughs> yeah. All right. So now the main difference at the restaurant in here is that I use the I don't use chicken thighs at the restaurant because not a lot of people go for them. But if you're doing it at home and you like chicken thighs, there's for a little bit of garnish. You put the sausage on there. You like chicken thighs, I highly recommend you do this with chicken thighs. And if enough of you come to the restaurant and say, I want it with chicken thighs, guess what I'll do? Do it with chicken thighs. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but there's, a, there's never enough of us in the world. That's chicken thigh people. Now I reduce that, pull the sauce over the top. Beautiful. Isn't that nice? Look at that. Voila, that's for me for later. <coughs> Whoop, slow down there, buddy. And one last thing, we need one more plate. Okay. Let's check out these ravioli. Now, when, you, when you're doing ravioli at home and you have this sauce, we've got this sauce that came together. Look at that, how mm -hmm. beautiful that cream sauce. We have the ravioli. They floated to the top. And I'm going to add them to the sauce to give them a last toss. The ravioli I use, did I mention where I get these from? No, you didn't. I didn't. Good. I'm so glad you're here. <laughs> I get these from Carla's Pasta. And they're a company in New Haven, Connecticut. Um, that she was born in the same town that I was. Wow. In Italy. That's really cool. It is, it really is. And she makes some of the most amazing ravioli I've ever had. And that's what I use at the restaurant. I absolutely love them. So it coats the pasta. You let, you let the ravioli sit in there just for another second. It helps thicken the sauce. Mm -hmm. And then all we do, you got a little fresh tarragon on you over there? Um, do you want it chopped or do you want the leaves? Yeah, I'll just put some leaves over the top. Okay. Oh, this looks so good. Thanks for your help, Kirsten. Absolutely. Oh, I'm happy to help. I'm, I'm excited that you're back in Keene, and you get to try out our new menu items. It's really simple to make a lot of these at home, and if you want to, I suggest, you know, just keeping this available, and if you have any questions, uh, just call me up, and I'll be happy to tell you how to walk, work your way through this, and it's a lot of fun. You're going to make this for dinner someday. I, I think I'm going to have to. Either that, or you're going to wrap one of these and go home and yeah. reheat it. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks so much. This looks like enough for four, right? <laughs> that is. That's good enough. Thanks for joining us. I'm glad you had a good time. We'll see you around, and we'll see you on our next culinary journey. part by Monadnock Florian Decorating, offering quality sales, service, and installation for over 35 years on Production Avenue next to Subaru of Keene.